I think the first issue that comes with understanding what entrepreneurship means to a man on the street is how the answer very interestingly differs when you ask a millennial what entrepreneurship means to them compared to when you ask a baby boomer or a member of Gen X. For millennials, we were born into a world of exciting, meteoric businesses created with instant global reach through the internet and the publicity that came with globalization. We've seen young startup owners, the likes of Mark Zuckerberg, even Spiegel and Bobby Murphy become overnight billionaires from as young as 23. So the narrative or rhetoric surrounding starting a business as discussed between millennials invariably takes into account these young superstars. And when you think of what it means to be a successful young entrepreneur, you're more inclined to think of a celebrated young personality from university in their 20s, maybe in their 30s, and that's basically it. The overall millennial mentality arising from this exposure to mainstream media, say movies like The Social Network, along with news and publications surrounding these young billionaires has sort of created the perception that this is the look. This is what young successful founders act like, look like, and is something I like to call the Silicon Valley fantasy. And when you then extrapolate this to how millennials view business ideas in general, you get extremely warped perceptions of what success means to them in terms of being a young entrepreneur. Unless your business idea can almost guarantee overnight success, and this bleeds into how we are also a generation ever so hungry for short-term gratification, my friends and I who are entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs observe that under this lens we tend to receive a lot more criticism than support. We get made fun of for being a wannabe Mark Zuckerberg instead of staying on the more tried and tested path of a 9 to 5 job. In the eyes of most millennials, the idea that a business does not turn a profit in a short span of time, that you're not a millionaire by 30, that there is some chance that the business will struggle and flail for months, for years on end, before it sees light at the end of the tunnel, is a foreign and alien concept. It is simply not the image of a successful young entrepreneur that they've grown to learn and respect. And because aspiring entrepreneurs and startup owners are scrutinized under this warped lens, tainted by ideas of unprecedented riches and revolutionizing how the world works, they necessarily pale in comparison to the standard set for the glorified and dignified young entrepreneur. The aspiring entrepreneur's ideas are then often dismissed by their family, peers and compatriots as too risky or that they simply will not work. But if you then step into and interact with aspiring startup owners in spaces where you find them in spades, for instance, in incubator schemes, accelerators, startup competitions, or maybe even visit a handful of them in their offices, this is quite far from the truth. Sure, there could perhaps still be the minority of aspiring owners who fit that archetype and are trying to shoot for the moon and become overnight billionaires, but these are still few and far between. It is really rarely a go big or go home type of scenario. More often than not, business owners who work on a certain idea they consistently believe in take the time to hammer away, create or adjust the business plan so that eventually it becomes sustainable enough to become their full-time job, if it isn't already. They take their failures and mistakes in their stride some obviously better than others, and seek to mold their business solution into its most optimal form. It is for the same reason that being an entrepreneur can sometimes be a rather lonely endeavor. You think about your business day and night, and I've come to know some entrepreneurs who talk about nothing but their business even when they go out with their friends. The reason that the life of a common entrepreneur doesn't get as much attention is simply because it isn't the exciting, spicy story people in the media are looking for. The unrealistic, warped image of what a young entrepreneur is like is one of the few reasons that pushed me to start this podcast. It is in the hopes of giving the aspiring millennial entrepreneur a more accurate, human, 
though less stylish coat of paint. Though the bigger dream is the hope of creating a community where like-minded millennial entrepreneurs can connect, share their stories, and maybe even a cup of coffee together. Thank you and all of my future guests for being a part of my journey. My name is VC and this is my podcast series on Millennials Unfiltered.